glimpses of india these stories are shared that holds the traditional a traditionally important place in our society first is about a baker from goa lucio rodriguez second kurk by lokesh abroad third t from assam by anup kumar datta before you read this is to discuss in the classroom as the class subject teacher has to uh, interact with you all if not then by yourself you have to read this is to develop your critical thinking and to imagine and bring connection develop your connection towards the chapter so first thing to be discussed is that what images of people and of places come to your mind when you think of our country talk about india okay then second what parts of india have you lived in or visited can you name some popular tourist destinations third you may know that apart from the british the dutch and the french the portuguese have also played a part in the history of our country can you say which parts of india show french and portuguese influences fourth can you say which part of india grow tea and coffee so for all this some you already might have uh, thought of that this this places or that places i have already visited and vivid picture also you have imagined and might you have remembered uh, which part of india uh, the foreigners have visited or uh, uh, stayed in our country okay and in which part of india tree uh, tea and coffee are grown so begin with the first part that is one of the glimpse of india that is a baker from goa lucio rodriguez about him let us know lucio rodriguez is a brazilian composer and musician known for blending traditional and contemporary styles his work often explores themes of identity culture and the rich musical heritage of brazil so this is a pen portrait of traditional gone village baker who still has an important place in his society we will continue part by part first part second part and third part so let us understand the first part that is a baker from goa our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good old portuguese days the portuguese and their famous loaves of bread those enters of those eaters of loaves might have vanished but the makers are still there we still have amongst us the mixers the molders molders and those who bake the loaves those age old time tested furnaces still exist the fire in the furnaces has not yet been extinguished the thud and the jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places maybe the father is not alive but the son still carries on the family profession these bakers are even today known as padder in goa so the narrator explains that in this paragraph that the portuguese influence in goa especially regarding their famous bread 
while the consumers of this bread may have changed or diminished the bakers known as peder continue their craft the text highlights that traditional baking practices including the use of old ovens and the distinct sounds made by bakers are still present even if the original bakers are no longer alive their traditions are carried on by generation keeping the culture heritage alive during our childhood in goa the baker used to be our friend companion and guide he used to come at least twice a day once when he set out in the morning on his sailing round and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket the jingling thud of his bamboo woke us up from sleep and we ran to meet and greet him why was it so was it for the love of the loaf not at all the loaves were brought by some uh, paskin or bastine the maid servant of the house what we longed for were those bread bangles which we chose carefully sometimes it was sweet bread of special make in this passage the author recalls about their childhood in goa and the special relationship with the local baker the baker visited their neighborhood twice a day once in the morning to sell bread and gain and again after he had finished he deliver his deliveries the sound of his bamboo stick jingling would make the children who eagerly rushed to greet him however they weren't excited about the regular loaves of bread instead they looked forward to the bread bangles a type of bread shaped like bangles and sweet bread which they enjoyed choosing by themselves this reflects a sense of homesickness for simpler times and the joy of small treats from the baker moving ahead with the passage the baker made his musical entry on the scene with the jug jug sound of his special made bamboo staff one hand supported the basket on his head and the other banged the bamboo on the ground he would greet the lady of the house with good morning and then place his basket on the vertical bamboo with we kids would be pushed aside with a mild rebuke and the loaves would be delivered to the servant but we would not give up we would climb a bench or the parapet and peep into the basket somehow i can still recall the typical fragrances of those loaves loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouth properly and why should we who would take the trouble to plucking the mango leaf for properly and why should we who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the tooth brush and why was it necessary at all the tiger never brushed his teeth or he could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all so here in this passage the uh, the author describes the joyful and musical arrival of the baker who made a distinctive jhag jhag sound with his bamboo staff as he walked through the neighborhood he greeted the lady of the house and set his basket down to deliver the bread while the children were gently pushed aside however the kids were determined to get a glimpse of the delicious bread especially the special bread bangles meant for them the author fondly remembers the enticing smell 
the favorite smell of the bread and how children didn't worry about hygiene like brushing their teeth at that time they joked about how no one bothered to make a toothbrush from mango leaves and noted that a cup of hot tea could easily clean their mouths this passage caps captures a carefree childhood filled with pleasures and nostalgic homesickness memories related to the baker's visits the oral questions are connect questions are connected here for you so you should attempt these questions which are very important for your good understanding and this can help you to make a, a, get a good score during examination time so never ignore such type of given questions let us proceed with the explanation marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as the bowl just as a party or a feast loses its charm without bread not enough can be said to show how important a baker can be for a village lady of the house must prepare this on the occasion of her daughter's engagement and bol bolinhas are a um, christmas as well as other festivals thus the presence of the baker's furnace in the village is absolutely essential in this passage the author emphasizes the most important role of the baker in the community especially in goa it states gifts are incomplete without the sweet called bowl and that no party of is complete without bread the text highlights so that during significant events like a daughter's engagement the lady of the house needs to prepare sandwiches and cakes and bolinhas small sweet breads are essential for christmas and other celebration overall the passage hi highlights that the baker's presence and his traditional baked goods are crucial for the cultural and social life of the village the baker or bread seller of those days had a peculiar dress known as it was a single piece long frock reaching down to the knees our childhood we saw bakers wearing and trousers which were shorter than full ones and longer than half pants even today anyone who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees invites the comment dressed like a tadder so here passage the uh, the writer writes that the traditional attire of bakers referred to as the baker used to wear outfit called the kabai which is a lock that reaches the knees in the old childhood bakers were often seen wearing shirts trousers that were shorter than full length pants shorts the passage also notes that even today if someone wears shorts that extended just below the knees people jokingly they look like a baker this highlights the lasting cultural significance of the baker's traditional dress in the common the baker usually collect bills at the end of the monthly accounts used to be recorded on some wall in pencil baking was indeed a profitable profession in the old days the baker and his family never starved he and his family and his servants always looked happy and prosperous their plump physique was an open testimony to this even today any person fruit like physical appearance is easily led to a baker finally the passage concludes that the author highlight in this last paragraph of this part that 
the financial stability and prosperity of bakers in that bakers typically collected their payments at the end of the month and kept track of monthly accounts by writing on walls with pencil baking was a lucrative profession uh, ensuring that bakers and their families were well fed and content their healthy their healthy plump appearances serve served as evidence of their good living the passage notes that even today people who have a robust jackfruit like physic are often humorously compared to bakers suggesting that their physical appearance is still associated with the abundance linked to this profession moving ahead with the overview of the passage is that the passage uh, the passage reflect on the homesickness presence of bakers in pa who were integral integral to community life their distinct bamboo sounds and traditional attire made them memorable bread specially sweet varieties held significant cultural importance during celebrations and e other events bakers maintained monthly accounts indicating the profitable of their trade ensuring their families thrived the joyful interaction with bakers in childhood memories along with their plumped physics symbolized their prosperity and the lasting in their profession on local culture so what is the moral that we learn here is that from this passage the moral that we learn is that the use of tradition community and the simple joys that come from cultural practices highlighting how certain professions like baking enrich our lives and memories so there are few exercises for you to evaluate yourself okay if i will help you here it will take more time so later on i will uh, put or discuss in another video first of all i'll complete all the explanation and then next i will try to discuss with the other exercises so till then you do your self evaluation and read your by yourself and have interest for reading so you will understand perfectly and remember the story next we'll proceed with the second part of the glimpses of india that is kurk this is also very important uh of our country and uh, kurk as i already uh, highlighted before that uh, it uh, is written by lokesh abrol so let me tell you little bit about lokesh abrol lokesh abrol is a notable indian author and film maker known for his engaging story telling and contributions to literature and cinema often exploring theme culture identity and human experience Kurk is coffee country famous for its rain forest and species rain forest and uh what is this spices not species spices so let us understand this kurk midway between sore and the coastal town of mangalore sits piece of heaven that must have drifted from the kingdom of god the land of rolling hills is inhabited proud race of martian beautiful woman and wild creature in this paragraph the author describes a area located between mysore in india it portrays this region as a beautiful and serene place 
linking it to heaven that descended from a divine realm, the landscape features, rolling hills, and the people living there are characterized as strong and proud, with a mix of brave men, attractive women, and wild animals. Overall, it paints a vivid picture of a charming and vibrant community in a stunning natural setting. Kirk or Kadugo. Kirk or Kod The smallest district Dhaka. So remember Kirk or Kodugo, the smallest district of Karnataka, it is located there, is home to evergreen rainforest, spices and coffee plantation. Evergreen rainforest of this district during the morning, it pours enough to keep many visitors away. The season of joy commences from September and continues till March. The weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for good measures. The air breathes of invigorating coffee. Coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand as canopies in prime corners. So here in this passage, the narrator talks about Kirk that it is also known as Kudagu, which is the smallest district in Karnataka, India. It is known for its lush evergreen rainforests, spice garden, and crop plantation. About 30% of Kirk is covered by the green forests. During the monsoon season, heavy rains come, deter many tourists from visiting However, from September to March, the weather is with a pleasant climate and occasional region is famous for its refreshing coffee. Our coffee estates and colonial style bungalows are situated under the shade of trees in beautiful locations. Overall, it paints a picture of Kirk as an inviting destination. The fiercely independent people of Kirk are possibly of Greek or, Ar or Arab descent. As one story goes, a part of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled when return became impractical. These people married amongst the locals and their culture is apparent in their uh, martial traditions, marriage and religious rites which are distinct from the Hindu mainstream. The theory of Arab origin draws support from the long back coat with an embroidered waist belt worn by the Kodavos known as Kupia. The, it resembles Kupia worn by the Arabs. The so here in this passage, the narrator describes about the people of Kurk who are known for their strong sense of independence and unique culture heritage. It suggests that they may have descended from Greek or Arabic ancestors. One theory claims that part of Alexander the Great's army settled in Kurk when they could not return home, intermarrying with local people. As a result, Kurgi culture has distinct to martial practices, marriage, religious ceremonies that differ from mainstream Hindu customs. The idea of Arab regions is further supported by their traditional clothing, particularly the long black coat called a kupia, which is similar to the kufia worn by Arabs and Kurds. Overall, the passage, the rich and diverse cultural influences shape the identity of Kurgi. Kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers. Kurg regiment is one of the most decorated in the Indian army 
and the first chief of Indian Army General uh, Khairappa was a Kurgi. Even now, Kodavos are the only people in India permitted to carry firearms without a license. Here in this passage, the author emphasizes the strong tradition of hospitality in Kurgi homes where families are eager to share stories of bravery and valor associated with their ancestors. It highlights the in their military history, noting that the Kurg regiment is one of the most honored regiments in the Indian Army. Additionally, that General Khairappa, the first chief of the Indian Army, was from Kurk. Today, the Kodavas people of Kurk hold a big privilege in India as they are the only city allowed to carry firearms without needing a license. This reflects their strong connection to martial traditions and their distinct identity within India. The river Kaveri obtains its water from the hills and forests of Kirk. Mahashir, a large freshwater fish, abound in these waters. Kingfishers dive for their catch, while squirrels and langurs drop partially eaten fruit from or for the mischief of enjoying the splash and the ripple effect in the clear water enjoy being bathed and in the river by the ma mahot. Here in this passage again the author describes about the Kaveri river which gets its water from the hills and forest of Kirk. This river is home to Maha, uh, Mahshir, okay? Mahshir, fish, a type of large freshwater fish. It also portrays a lively ecosystem where kingfishers dive into the river to catch fish and squirrels and langurs playfully drop partially eaten fruit into the water, enjoying the splashes. Additionally, elephants are mentioned as they love to be bathed and scurped in the river by their handlers, mahots. Of all, the passage highlights the vibrant wildlife and activities around the Kaveri River in the most laid-back individuals become birds to the life of high-energy adventure, river, rafting, canoeing, rappling, climbing, and mountain biking, numerous walking trials in this region are a favorite with trekkers. So here in this passage, the narrator highlights how even the most relaxed people in court are drawn to exciting outdoor activities. It mentions various adventurous pursuits available in the area such as river rafting, canoeing, rappling, rock climbing, mountain biking. Additionally, there are many trials that are popular among King the region and attractive destination for those seeking adventure and exploration. Overall, it showcases Kurk as a place where visitors can engage in a range of activities amidst its natural beauty. Birds, bees, butterflies are there to give you company. Macaws, birds, squirrels, langurs, and slain deer lorries keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy. I do, however, prefer to step aside for wild elephants. So the passage describes here by the author about the rich wildlife found in the region, highlighting the presence of birds, bees, and butterflies that creates a livelier. It also mentions various animals such as cows. Malabar squirrels, langos, and lorises, which observes from the tree copies. The author expresses a personal preference to keep a safe distance from wild elephants, suggesting a respect for these powerful creatures. Overall, the passage paints a picture of a vibrant ecosystem teeming, wild, uh, teeming with life, while also emphasizing the need for caution around 
larger wildlife. The climb to the Brahmagiri Hills brings you into a panoramic view of the landscape of Kirk, a walk across which leads to the 64-acre island Na, uh, Nasar Gandhama, running into Buddhist songs from India's largest Tibetan settlement at nearby Bailakapu is a bonus. The monks in red accord and yellow robes are amongst the many surprises we discovered by visitors searching for the soul of India right here in Kuru. So, here in this paragraph, the passage describes by the author that the experience of climbing the Brahmagiri Hills, which offers stunning panoramic view of the misty land of Kirk, it mentions a walk across a rope bridge that leads to uh, Nisar Gandhama, a beautiful island covering 64 acres. Visitors may also encounter Buddhist monks from Bailakupu, the largest Tibetan settlement in India, who were who wear vibrant red accord and yellow robes. These monks are one of the many delightful surprises tourists who are exploring the rich essence of India in Kirk. Overall, it highlights the region's natural beauty and cultural diversity. So, we have come to end with our second part and let me sum up about Kirk that Kurk, the smallest district in Karnataka, India, is known for its lush rainforest, coffee plantations, and unique culture influenced by potential Greek or Arabic ancestors. The hospitable Kurgis take from their martial traditions with the distinguished work regiment and a privilege to carry firearms without a license. The scenic Kaveri River is teeming with wildlife, while adventurous activities like trekking and river rafting attract visitors. Scenic views, encounters with Buddhist monks, and vibrant ecosystems make Kurk a captivating destination. So finally, from the second part, we learn the moral is that Kurk exemplifies Kurk exemplifies the beauty of nature, rich culture and adventure, highlighting the importance of preserving both wildlife and tradition. This is the fact file. I will not read, but you should read more to know best. So, this is all. Let us continue with the third part also. Third part, now we have reached to the third part, T from Assam, written by Anup Kumar. Datta. Let us know few things about him. Anup Kumar Datta is a prominent Indian author and poet for his contributions to literature, blending themes of nature, culture, and human emotions in his works. So, in all the three parts, we see the same uh, same theme reflected by all the authors. Okay, like themes of nature and human traditions and their works. So, part 3 also, it is highlighting about one of these theme, T from Assam. Let us read what are the things discussed here. Pranjol, a youngster from Assam, is Rajbir's classmate at school in Delhi. Pranjol's father is the manager of a tea garden in Upper Assam and Pranjol has arrived, invited Rajveer to visit his home during summer vacations. The uh, friend, one friend is inviting another friend to visit their hometown. So, Pranjol is from Assam. He is inviting uh, Rajveer who is from Delhi. Both of them are studying in the Delhi school and to see uh, Pranjol's uh, hometown and the tea garden. So, let us understand about this. Few, a few conversation I will read, I will explain. Chai Gram, Gram Chai, a vendor called out in a high-pitched voice. 
he came up to their window and asked, Chai Sahar, two cups, Pranjol set. The, the steaming hot liquid almost everyone in the compartment was drinking tea too. Do you know that our 80 crore cups of tea are drunk every day throughout the world? Rajveer said. Wow! exclaimed exclaimed Pranjal, tea really is very popular. So till here, let us understand. In this passage, a tea vendor was calling out to sell hot tea on a train. Pranjal, of the character of this story, tea and they both enjoy the warm drink. Rajkumar shares an interesting fact that our 800 million cups of tea are consumed globally each day. Pranjal is surprised and acknowledges that tea is indeed very popular. The train pulled out of the station. Pranjal buried his nose in his detective book again. Rajveer too was an ardent fan of detective stories, but as he was keener on looking at the beautiful it was green, green everywhere. Rajveer had never seen so much greenery before. Then the soft green paddy fields gave way to tea bushes. Here, the scene we are seeing is of the uh, green garden. Okay, so in this passage, the train departs from the station and Pranjal resumes reading his detective book while Rajveer, who also enjoys detective stories, prefers to admire the beautiful landscape outside. He notices the vibrant green scenery which includes lush paddy fields that soon transition into tea bushes. The scene contrasts Pranjal's focus on reading with Rajvir's present for nature, highlighting the beauty of surrounding during their train journey. And previously, previously which I have explained, that scene highlights the enjoyment of tea and its wide spread popularity. So first part which I have discussed about Chai Gram Chai Gram, that scene highlights the enjoyment of tea and its widespread popularity. Second one just now I have discussed is the scene that contrasts Pranjo's focus on reading with appreciation for nature highlighting the buildings during their train journey. It was a magnificent view against the backdrop of densely wooded hills, a sea of tea bushes stretched as far as I could see, uh, dwarfing the tiny tea plant, sturdy shade trees, and amidst the orderly rows of bushes, usually more like figures. In the distance was an ugly building with smoke blowing out of tall chimneys. So here in this passage, the narrator informs us that the view outside the train is described as there are vast tea bushes that stretch a tall, tall, dense, a tall, dense. the tea plants are small compared to the large shade trees surrounding them and small figures, recent dolls, are seen walking among the tea bushes. In the background, there is an unattractive building with smoke rising from its tall chimneys contrasting with the natural plantation. This description captures the mix of beauty and industrial elements in the line landscape. Moving ahead with the passage. Hey, a tea garden! Rajatitli Pranjal, who had been born and brought a plantation, didn't share Rajvi's excitement. Oh, this is tea country now, he said. Assam has the largest concentration of plantation in the world. You will see enough gardens to last you a lifetime. I have been reading as much as I could about tea. Rajvir, no one really knows who discovered tea but their agents. 
here in this passage it expresses his excitement happiness upon seeing a tea garden but pranjal who grew up on a tea plantation is less enthusiastic he informed that they are now in assam which has the highest number of tea plantation in the world suggests we'll see many more gardens during their journey rajveer share shares uh, rajveer shares that he has been about tea and mentions that although the origin of tea is unknown there are very legends surrounding its discovery this conversation highlights their different perspective understanding on tea and sets the stage for further exploration of its history what legends well there's the one about the chinese emperor who is boiled water before drinking it one day a few leaves of the twigs burning under the pot fell into the water giving it a delicious flavor it is said they were tea leaves tell me another coughed pranjal indian legend 2 buddhi dharma ancient buddhist ascetic cut off his eyelids because he felt sleepy during meditations then that ten tea plants grew out of the eyelids the leaves of these plants when put in hot water and drunk banished sleep so here in this passage rajveer shares a legend about the discovery of tea telling pranjal about a chinese emperor who boiled water and accidentally let some tea leaves fall into it resulting in a tasty drink pranjal skeptical asked for another story rajveer then recounts an indian legend involving buddhi dharma a buddhist monk who feeling asleep during meditation uh, i leads from those leads 10 tea plants grew the leaves from these plants when brewed into hot water help to keep people awake this exchange the cultural significance of tea and its mystical origins <clears throat> tea was first drunk in cha rajveer added as far back as 2700 bc in fact words such as tea chai and chini are from chinese tea came to europe only in the 16th century and was drunk as more as medicine than as beverage the train clattered into uh, marini junction the boys collected their luggage and pushed their way to the crowded flat form pranjol's parents were waiting so here in this passage as as more interesting facts about tea he mentions that consume in china around 2700 bc and that words like tea chai and chini are derived from chinese he explained that uh, tea made its way to you 16th century where it was initially used as a medicine than a drink as the train arrives at uh, marini junction the boys gather their luggage and make their way through the busy platform where pranjal's parents are waiting to greet them this segment highlights rajveer's enthusiasm for learning about tea and sets the scene for the boys arrival in a new location that is assam pranjal's parents were waiting for them soon they were driving towards uh, dekhi dekhai bari okay dekhai bari the tea garden by pranjal's father and car veered sharply off road they crossed a cattle bridge and entered the uh, the khai bari tea estate on both sides of the gravel road were acre upon acre bushes all neatly pruned to the same height groups of tea pluckers with bamboo baskets on their backs wearing plastic aprons were plucking the newly sprouted leaves so in this passage the author 
tells us that the boys were traveling in a car towards the Khaibari, the tea garden managed by Pranjal's father. After about an hour, they take a sharp turn off the main road, cross a cattle bridge and enter a tea estate. Along the gravel road, there was vast tea bushes all trimmed to the same height, creating a neat appearance. Groups of tea pluckers who carried bamboos on their backs and wore plastic aprons were busy gathering the fresh leaves. This description captures the beauty and activity of tea estate show, easing the process of tea cultivation. Pranjal's father slowed down to a light tractor pulling a trailer load of tea leaves to pass. This is the second flush or sprouting period, isn't it, Mr. Barwa? Rajvir asked. It lasts from May to July and yields the best tea. You seem to have done your homework before coming, Pranjal's father said in surprise. Yes, Mr. Barwa, Rajvir admitted, but I hope to learn much more while I am here. So, finally, in this passage, the author describes that Pranjal's father slows down their car to let a tractor of tea leaves pass by. Rajvir, eager to show his knowledge, Ask Pranjal's father if this period is the second flush which lasts from May to Ju July and produces the best tea. Mr. Barwa's Pranjal's father is impressed by Rajvir's knowledge and comments on how well prepared he was. Rajvir acknowledges this but expresses his desire to learn even more during his visit. This interaction highlights Rajvir's enthusiasm for tea and his, his eagerness to gain more experience in the tea growing region. So, finally, we get the moral from this part of the glimpse of India is that the importance of curiosity and the willingness to learn about different cultures and tradition. Okay, the moral that we learn from this part 3 story shared by Anup Kumar Dutta is that it highlights the importance of curiosity and the willingness to learn about different cultures and traditions. So, to sum up, the whole story of this part 3 is that Rajvir and Pranjal travel by train to Dekhai Bari in Assam, a tea garden managed by Pranjal's father, they enjoy tea and discuss its popularity and legends of its discovery. Upon arrival in Assam, the Khaibari, they admire the vast tea plantations where, where workers harvest fresh leaves. Rajvir shares his knowledge about tea, including the second flush period, impressing Pranjal's father, eager to learn even more, Rajvir looks forward to explore the world, explore the world of tea during his stay at the state of Assam. So this is all about the glimpses of India connecting to the three culture and traditions. So I hope you have enjoyed, though it had taken long time, but I tried it to make it short, and now it's up to you to have interest for self-reading and enjoy more and be clear with the understanding. So, thank you and we'll meet with the next part of this chapter that is the poem. Till then, take care and do reading and prepare well. Thank you.